It would be the trade of the century. Juan Soto, one of the best young hitters in baseball and a surefire superstar, could be headed to the Bronx. But at what cost? How's it going, everybody? I know a lot of you are very interested in the Juan Soto sweepstakes. I'm following it closely myself. He's one of the better young players that's ever been available via trade. And so the trade package to get him, we've already talked about on this channel, is going to be enormous. Right now, the rumor is the Nationals are asking for four top young players. This could include prospects or major league-ready players who have some service time. Think guys like Glaber Torres. Think guys like IKF. So by definition, a trade this big would alter your organization drastically. You'd lose a bunch of your prospects and possibly one or two players from your major league roster. I wanted to invite another Yankees podcaster on, Andrew Rotundi from the Bronx Pinstripes podcast, and we're going to talk about how the Juan Soto trade, if it happens, would alter the Yankees for years to come. lot of Yankees fans, yourself included, have, you know, kind of been mentally trying to alchemize a deal for Juan Soto that doesn't completely destroy the rest of the organization. Right now, the rumored ask is four to five top young players, including potential MLB players that have a bit of service time left. Think IKF, think Labor Torres, Jordan Montgomery. Let's start there. Who on the Yankees would really even fit that profile of being young and good enough to step in that you think other teams would really consider, you know, valuable? It, it has to start with Glaber. Uh, that that was a, even before this year. I think teams would have taken a chance on Glaber, even though he had a couple down years, just because he was so good for for a couple years and still young. Other than Glaber, there's really, aside from, you know, I guess some some pitching options, some in the bullpen too, there's some options, but no team's trading Juan Soto for some bullpen <laughs> arms. Right. So, so it's Glaber. But the problem there lies for the Yankees. Well, then you're, you're not getting maybe better this year. If you're trading away pieces that are currently helping you win for Juan Soto, are you just making a slight upgrade? That doesn't necessarily help you win a World Series. That's not what I right. want to do. I want to I want to try and win a World Series this year with this roster, add pieces to this roster. I would love Juan Soto in the lineup. I mean, no one could logically tell you he doesn't make this lineup better. But if you're removing pieces from the everyday lineup to add Juan Soto, what what's the upgrade? Like we how I, I don't know that that's just marginally getting better. That's not what I want. And just looking at other players that the Yankees have in their system that I think could step in probably tomorrow and play for the Nationals. Maybe Ken Waldachuk could slip into their rotation. He looks like he's ready, but you never know. Prospect Oswald Peraza could probably step in there. Shortstop hasn't done much. IKF could probably play third if you want him to. He's you know got the defensive value. Maybe uh, you know Andujar would have some value. I don't know, but he can't play defense. He doesn't have that much value. Floreal, obviously not super valuable. Ben Rortvet, the catcher, is close, but you know a cup of coffee last year didn't do much. So I just don't see the the major league ready players being something that the Yankees can spend. They're going to have to dump the farm. I do want to bring up one more question with you about this, though, because it, we know that Brian Cashman has been creative. You know, he likes to pull three-team deals and stuff like the Didi Gregorius deal was a three-team trade. Maybe there's like a possibility for a third team where the Yankees deal some other prospects to get like a younger player that then they could, you know, swap to the Nationals to kind of make it fit. Yeah, I mean, sure, you could get creative, but but if you're the Nationals, like the reason that the reports are we're asking they're asking for major league ready talent plus your top minor leaguers because they're asking for the the moon with with Juan Soto that's the position they're in right now so if no one's going to offer that then then they'll have to back off of it if you're the Yankees you you need to just you're in on Juan Soto because you're you're the Yankees you're in on everything like every report throws the Yankees name attached to a rumor just so all of our fans click click on the link right, you're right. but if, if you're the Yankees you you I'm more concerned with winning a championship this year than I am just getting Juan Soto. This we're not we're not building for the next 10 years. We're building for the next 2 
years to win a championship. So, so again, I go back to, yeah, you could get creative. You could try and ship off some, some players to then get prospects back to the nationals. Maybe you send Glaber or you send some of those other guys, Waldachuk, Florial to teams that are kind of in the middle, right? They're going to be competing for a wild card spot over the next couple of years. Adding Glaber Torres to their team could maybe put them into a in, over the top for a playoff position. Fine, yeah, you could do that. But this starts and ends with your top four prospects out of your organization: Dominguez, right. Volpe, uh, like th like those guys have to go. And if you're prepared to, and, and, and I think that's what the Nationals are going to eventually make the decision on: what's our prospect hall? Right now, Dominguez, you just mentioned, uh, he was recently dropped to number eight in the new midseason baseball America prospect rankings. Do you think that that drop off is alarming? Do you think it might keep some teams from asking for him? Uh, do you think maybe the Yankees, you know, through some through some vacation house money to whoever makes that list to keep other teams from asking for, huh. you know, your know, conspiracy theory? Um you know, what are your thoughts on Jason Dominguez in general? And, and do you think he's a must keep at this point? No, he's not a must keep. Uh, I don't think anyone's a must keep because I keep saying the same thing. I'm trying to win a championship. No, no one's a must keep. It has to be for the right deal. He obviously, when he was signed inter out of the international pool, everyone was super high on him. He was clearly the Yankees number one prospect. He, dude had never played against like organized competition. Right. right. So like all we had seen is fuzzy Instagram videos of freaking him cattle roaming the outfield and chickens running behind home plate yeah. while he's hitting. It's like, we saw two pictures of him. The one of him signing where he looked like he was 170 pounds soaking wet. And the one where he looked like he was 250 pounds and just been lifting weights for six straight months. Those are right. the only two pictures. We had to go <laughs> okay. And then like in the, it, what we've seen is he's, he's struggled a little bit against some good competition. Yeah. That's going to happen happen when you're 19 years old I, I don't think it would deter a team I think he was the number one signee for a reason I think Yon Mankata went through some similar stuff uh, yeah. through, through his come up where I mean he was with the Red Sox they traded him to to the White Sox for for Chris Sale um, he went through some struggles and then ultimately became a major league player so no I don't think it would deter uh, a team from for, uh, if you're going to deal once out of the Yankees if you're going to deal your top players to the Yankees that's the, those are the first two names you mentioned to Brian Cashman or two of the first three or four names that you mentioned to Brian Cashman. Right. So that just brings me back to my original point. If you're going to go out and get Juan Soto, and this is why I don't think it's going to happen. You're going to have to unload your system. And right now, as we saw last night, as we've seen a lot over the last month, the pitching needs help. I mean, we, we have, we, I, the fact that we're running Domingo Herman out there against Max Scherzer Jameson Tyon hasn't gotten anybody out in six weeks. He's had and then, one good start in his last two months, like in, right. right before the break. I think there's some guys out there that they have to consider that are maybe on the, the cheaper side if you want to go after Juan Soto still. I mean, you have to look at like the Martin Perez, who's kind of like a soft throwing. I mean, I get touched 93 miles an hour, but he's, he's like a soft contact guy. Uh, but I, I just don't think you can go out and get a Castillo and still be in the Juan Soto market. I think that's why it's kind of, been the opinion of most people that it's going to be one or the other. If you had to vote right now, would you rather go all in for Juan Soto or would you rather try and spread your chips around to get a Castillo and maybe a couple of relief pitchers, maybe maybe a Benintendi or a Hap uh, to fill out the outfield? Well, I think you've kind of answered the question, right? Like, what is a better team the day after the deadline? This exact same Yankees team plus Juan Soto or this exact same Yankees team plus Castillo and Andrew Benintendi, or, or plus Castillo and Hap. It's clearly plus Benintendi and, and a good pitcher because this pitching staff is, is in big trouble. We don't know what Luis Severino is going to be when and if he comes back from injury or how long he's going to take to come back from injury. Jordan Montgomery had been pretty consistent and he was terrible against the Mets last night. Tyon's been awful. Cannot count. I don't think you can count on him. No. Uh, he might turn it around. He turned it around at the end of last year, but but are we just like hoping? Oh, August first, all of a sudden he's going to turn it around, right? Like, but like, hope what's isn't that? a That's, plan. <laughs> no, like of course you've got. Cold. If we had this conversation six weeks ago, I would have been like, no, the rotation is the best it's ever been. Like everyone was throwing no hitters, pretty much. So it's just it's changed a lot over the past couple of weeks. And the bullpen losing Michael King is massive. That's a massive loss to this bullpen, especially because you can't count on Chapman. Malizic has been lost. So you have Clay Holmes and and um, some other guys who are more un, 
more on, on the unproven side who have been good. Wandy's been good. Marinaccio has been good. He was dealing with dead arm. So other guys have been good, but it's not like a loaded bullpen. Uh, I, I just don't see us getting that big ticket item unless it's Castillo. If if the Yankees get Juan Soto, that probably means Aaron Judge is not going to be a Yankee next year. Right. And are fans okay with that? I don't know that I'm okay with that. Who's better for the next decade? Yeah, it's Juan Soto. Who's better for next year? I don't know. It's prob- probably Aaron Judge. He's been the best right. player in the league. So again, if you're trying to win a World Series in 22 and 23, I think Judge gives you a slightly better chance than Juan Soto. Not that Juan Soto doesn't give you a good chance, but obviously. Man, Judge is picking a good year to hit 60-plus home yeah. runs. I mean, how much is this guy going to walk away with? You know, he turned down, what, eight years, $217 million plus the 17 this year, something like that? Uh, well, yeah, because it was eight. It was really a seven-year free agent contract because it was the last year of his arbitration. And he, he wanted he wants 10 reported. I, well, I don't I don't think he's going to get 10 from the Yankees. I just don't think that Cashman's going to go that far for him. But I could see Cashman anting up the average annual value. You know, if it's eight years at 40, you know, highest AAV for a position player, something like that. Yeah. If you if if Cashman could have a crystal ball and see where Aaron Judge is right now back on opening day, what do you think the contract offer would have been? 40 plus you know, for seven, eight years. I mean, but he's going to be a year older now. You know, I just. Uh, but they were already I, prepared to pay him. What his agent's going to argue is you were already prepared to pay him through this age. And now yeah. he just went out and had an MVP MVP caliber season and moved to center fielder for full time for you guys. Right. Okay. You're going to give him at least one extra year, if not two years for that. Yeah. And then I'm pointing at John Carlos Stanton and I'm saying, what's going to happen in two years Ted, this guy's legs. You know, are we going to have two of these guys who can't play the field for more than a couple of weeks without getting hurt? So, um, well, we're going to have to start lobbying for double DHs. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be a, a, a crazy, crazy weekend. The fact that everybody could be in on Soto, do you think that that could allow Cashman to kind of sneak in and get some other deals done earlier? Because if I'm the Nationals, I'm waiting until the very last second that I have to deal with because I want to get as much as possible. So maybe that keeps somebody from trading some of their best prospects, you know, for a Castillo or for a Martin Perez or for a Ian Happ. You know, do you think that he's going to go in there and just try and scoop up some guys Friday, Saturday? Maybe, I, but like early where, I don't know, is that really that early? I guess before the deadline is considered early. I think this team should have been acquiring pitching for the last week and a half. I think it was, yeah. clear, it was clear that this team, this pitching staff, especially coming out of the all-star break with that double header, just the bullpen was so taxed. You, you should have tried to acquire pitching ASAP. Um, do you think Soto's definitely going to be dealt though? Like, so, you know, I, I listened to a lot of Francesa and he had a good point about this. Right now, there's a limited a number of teams that could trade for him because, you know, the teams that are going for it aren't going to want to give up those uh, in-season guys like like the Torres or whatever from right. their team that are trying to help them win. But if you wait till the offseason, it opens up another at least five or ten teams that, that have the time now. If you make a trade for Juan Soto in November, well, then you have all of December, all of January and early February to put together the rest of the pieces to make it work. Let's say the Yankees wait till August 2nd and they trade, you know, Glaber Torres and, you know, uh, Peraza and Volpe and a couple others to get Soto. Well, now who the hell is going to play, you know, the infield? I mean, you you move, we got Donaldson in there full time now and you slide DJ over to second. Well, that hasn't really been a great formula for keeping Donaldson healthy. Like there's too many moving parts and I, I just think that it would make sense for them to hang on to him until the winter. I agree. I think you get, like you said, you get more teams who are just building their team for the next season to, okay, we're going dis- to we're gonna now build around Juan Soto versus try and fit Juan Soto into our season halfway through. I, I, I don't know what the Nationals are going to do. Maybe a team gets stupid and just like, this is our chance. We're going we're gonna to empty everything for Juan Soto. Maybe that happens and the Nationals will pounce on it. I don't see the Yankees doing it, though. I don't want the Yankees to do that. I, I think yeah. there's too many other problems on this team right now to where you had such a good first half of the season. You can't let this thing spiral out of control and right. limp, into, limp into the playoffs and then be one and done. That would be such a massive failure. How would you handle the Araldus chapman situation? Would you let him try and keep working it out? Or would you see if maybe there's a team out there that 
wants a you know full-time closer role where he seems to be most comfortable uh, knowing that he's not the same pitcher that he once was you're not going to get a huge haul for him and it will create another vacuum in that bullpen but maybe you can bring in a fresh arm you know from somewhere uh, like clay holmes nobody expected him last year something like that i think david robertson is still a possibility he's perfect for this team. he's perfect and we know he can do it in the playoffs in new york uh how would you handle the chapman situation I think you have to just keep doing what you're doing. You're kind of, your hands are tied. He has no value on the trade market. So you'd essentially be just trying to get a team to take some salary off your hands. And now if you do that, if it's necessary to then add salary elsewhere, then then fine. But the most value Chapman could provide the Yankees is to get back on track and pitch well, whether that's in the seventh inning, eighth inning or ninth inning. I don't think his problem is mental. I think his problem is mechanical. He's not locating his fastball. And then he's got to throw his slider, which has been terrible, and it gets hit, right? Like, right. this is, I don't think this is a mental problem with Chapman where he's like, oh, sh crap, I'm in the seventh inning. I can't, I got to hang a slider now because it's the seventh inning. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you could argue that it's a different, it's a different feel trying to get the last three outs versus trying it to is. come in. Yeah. It's definitely a different feel. I'm not trying to tell you that the seventh inning is the same as the ninth inning. Would Chapman rather be pitching the ninth inning? Of course. He, I mean, right. I think he's even said that. But I don't think he's struggling because he's not pitching the ninth inning. I think he's not pitching the ninth inning because he's struggling. We talked about this guy a little bit on Twitter. Uh, Andrew Benintendi. Would you let the whole Toronto and not being vaccinated thing deter you forget from getting him? Because like you said to me on Twitter, he's got a fantastic contact rate, which is something the Yankees need. I think his power numbers will go up at Yankee Stadium. I know he hits the, the power. Ball. I know, but I, power. I'm just saying he, he'll be dangerous. He'll be he'll be a dangerous yeah. left-handed hitter. Um, I'm, I'm not asking him to come in and be a, a power hitter, but, you know, sometimes you need those guys, those left-handed hitters to be able to put one over the short porch. Would you let that vaccination status deter you? I would see if you can get a slight discount for it from the <laughs> Royals. And if they say no, I still pull the trigger because I think he'd be that good for this line. All right, Andrew, appreciate you joining uh, Bronx Pinstripes, one of the top audio podcasts in the world, really, especially in the baseball category, Blue Wire podcast. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Derek. Thanks so much. This was fun.